Hey everyone, my name is Michael and today I want to have a look at query conventions. We already have for a long time something that is called mutation conventions. And mutation conventions make sure that your mutation is always well formed. You basically conform to the GraphQL best practices. One very nice thing about mutation conventions is actually the error handling where you have domain errors that you can use in your types. Let me actually show you that. So I'm going to start here, my GraphQL server, and then I go to banana cake pop, open a new document, and then we're going to write a mutation here. So if I write a mutation with mutation conventions enabled, for instance, create order here, I can dive in and you can see that I have two options here. One is order, that is whenever this order went through, we created the order and we get a positive result, right? The other thing is these errors. And these errors you can see here just have type name. And that is because they are actually representing a union. So when I want to handle these errors, I basically write a fragment and then I see what errors this mutation has. For instance, this mutation has an invalid product ID error. If I want to order something that doesn't exist, right? Or if the price has changed since I hit the order button. So basically I hit the order button, we send on the price that I saw in the web shop and then the mutation compares that to the actual price that is now in the product catalog. If the price is changed, we get this price change error. It tells us which product of our order has a price change and then our UI can render some extra screens that tell the user, look, the price has changed, it got cheaper. Uh, do you want to do the order or it got more expensive? Do you still want to do the order or whatnot? A very frequent question in our community is, could we have something like that on queries? The short answer, this structure is not ideal for queries because it's very heavy. And if you think about the nested things where you have a top level query and then the nested fields where you might also want to have errors, it's not ideal. But we rethought this whole thing and abstracted basically the mechanism behind that and built something that fits into the query world. And let me show you that. So I'm going back here to our project, let's stop it. And let's go actually to our program CS. So in my ordering API, I go to program CS and here I can now chain in something called the query conventions. This is basically the same thing like I do with my mutation conventions, just that it's now applied on queries. So when I go now to my query type here, then I can see that at this point I have a get order here, which basically fetches an order by ID. But what I want to do here is if I cannot find the order, I actually want to have a not found error or something like that. So I'm introducing here record and I call this record for instance, not found. And then I pass into that record the actual ID that we couldn't find. This ID is actually a relay ID in our case and it's a relay ID of product. Awesome. Also, we have always a message here. So the general error structure that basically the obligatory fields you can control by providing an error interface. So if we go here, we can say we want to provide an error interface and whatever we define here will need to be implemented by all errors. By default, we define that each error has to have a message. So in this case, we have to provide a message. And this message is not meant to display in the UI. It's more for developers. They can just get this printed message and then they know what is happening actually or what the reason is behind something. So we can put in the message here and then say, could not find a product with the specified ID. Awesome, so that's enough. So to use this error, we have something called a field result and that is a union, if you will. So either it's an order and if it's an order, it's actually never null or we have a not found error. So the beauty of it is that now the order implicitly converts to this field result here. The only thing we have to do is capture the order, then we're gonna analyze it if order is null, we just return our error down there. And if we found it, then we just return the order, right? Okay, let's run that and go to banana cake pop and we can rerun our get order by ID query here. And then you can see we cannot run our original query here because our schema actually has changed. So let's have a look at the schema and reflect on what actually happens here. So when I go to the schema reference and best to view it in the column view, then we can go here to query 
we can have a look at order and order has now an order by ID result, which is actually a union. And when we go into that union, you can see this union has two cases, not found and order. So if we go back to our query here, we actually can now write kind of a switch case. So we can say, if it's an order, then we wanna have the order data. But if it's not found, we wanna have the ID that we couldn't find. And to future proof our query here, we can say, if it's any error that you might add in the future, then I wanna always have the message. So now we can rerun that and you can see we hit our field here and then we get here is submitted, right? So if we change that and provided a different ID that we cannot find and run that, we get here our error. You can see that is the 16 from our error here and we get the message. If I also want to have kind of an error kind here, I could say error kind, and then I could use the type name. And then you have here now this error kind, which says it's not found, right? So, and it's easily expandable. So if we wanted to have another case here, we could just write another record. And then I could just extend that here and say, okay, we also now throw some error, right? And then in our schema, and then in our schema, we could see that get order or order by ID now has two errors and one success result. So there are key differences here to what the mutation conventions. So we don't have a list of errors. So you have one error condition, like it's not found. You could have errors under there again, like uh, they could nested errors or whatever, but it's very flat and that fits very well into queries, right? You fetch the order, then you just say, okay, if it's an order and then you'll be done. Like the API from a user standpoint is still very nice to query and not as bulky as mutation API. And think about that if you have that couple of layers deep, like items, for instance, also has a union here that you want to query that would become very tedious if you had a payload object everywhere in there. It also works with exceptions like the mutation conventions. We could also just say, maybe we just have an exception here. This guy maybe is just an exception. And then we could throw this guy here. And, and in order for our mutation to know about this additional error that is now an exception, we could just have that on top of here and say, okay, we actually also have this error that is thrown by an exception. So now we run that and see exception is thrown. And here we have now some error and the exception. And here also see the future proving, right? I didn't specify the case here for this specific error to get the data, but I still get a decent response because this is kind of catch all errors case. So I could now rewrite that and say, okay, actually, if there is uh, this strange sum error, I want this sum field. And then I get actually a richer result where I have now this specific field here, right? So you can mix and match. You can also just use exceptions. In this case, you wouldn't need to have this field result here, right? You could just have order and uh, it would still work, right? We would now just rewrite it because you have exceptions here. So in this case, we have order and some exception. Refresh that, have a look at that, and then you can see we still have these two. Depending on what style you like more, with the result type or by throwing exceptions, it's all working. Okay, there's one last thing here, because it could be that you wanna capture this exception, but you wanna rewrite it, maybe uh, wrap it in something. So you could have here a class, and let's call the class some error. And this class eats this exception. And then we would do something with this exception, maybe have here our message, and then put something in front of this. Whatever, you can put any property on there. You could write proper resolvers here, inject services into that. Like I could have the get order query here. And from the order, we return here the status. So you can see that's very flexible. So basically you define here the sum error, and then you declare instead of the exception up here, the error. And what we do is we inspect the constructors. So each exception that this error handles, we will take it and basically wrap the exception and return the error type. So let's try that. So you can see now our schema became invalid because now our error has this sum error here. This sum error has a message and has foo and foo is this status string, right? We could now ask 
foo here. And if I ask for this, it will actually fetch an order. I don't know if this order even exists that I specified there, but it would fetch that. You can see it throws the exception and then this will lead to the exception being wrapped by this type and this resolver being invoked, right? And then we get the result downstream here. In this case, it's submitted, which, okay, that's, that's actually an order that we have there. Okay, so this is query conventions. Like it's very flexible how you can now write query fields and handle these error types here. And you saw there are multiple variants that you could use, like with exceptions, with this field result type, or with these wrapper objects that catch the exceptions and then let you do more with them. So before I let you go, please help our project by starring it on GitHub. A GitHub star is really the easiest contribution that you can do to any open source project. So if you're using open source projects in general, go and star them and uh, please star our project. And with this, see you next time.